Oh, y'all can do better than that. Good morning, Frontier Church. Turn to your neighbor, slap him right in the forehead and say, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you're in the house of the Lord today. You know, I was actually in a church. They actually did that. They slapped each other right in the face. It was like, I said, no, I was, I, I'm not coming back for the offering. Amen. Just coming, leaving. Anyway, it, how, how many are ready for God's word today? How many are ready? Today, I want to get right down to where we are in the book of James, and I think this message is going to be very critical for all of us to understand the realities of what we're called to do, the realities of who we are, the realities of what life really is. Uh, how many know that life is, God, Jesus never promised us that we would not go through trouble? Hello, somebody. You know, the beauty that we have is that when we go through anything, that the Lord is what? With us. It means that the world, because it's been converted by sin, it's been, it's been infected by sin, that, that the world is going to continue to do the same thing it has always done. People that don't know the Lord will treat you the same way they always have. But when you come to know Jesus Christ and you allow him into your life, then the power of the Holy Spirit is with you and it can overcome whatever's in your world. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm an overcomer. <clears throat> but many times what happens is, as we begin to grow, we forget certain truths that are necessary for us to understand how we are to live out with Christ. And, and I'm excited to be able to come from the book of James and begin to share some of these truths with you so that we all can be on the same page uh, and be able to do what God has called us to do. Um, would you bow your heads for a word of prayer, please? We're going to take a word, of, uh, a moment to pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you're doing an amazing work among us. That, God, there's nothing too hard for you to do. When they sing that song, that when I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you, I'm reminded of Elijah, Elisha, and his servant, where he says, look, look, we're surrounded by an army. And it's pressure and it's stress and I'm afraid for my life. And it looks like all is, is going to fall apart. All of it is, is for naught. All the good works we've done, all the things we, 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 we struggle to perform. Now there's an army around us to destroy us. And yet in the midst, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open up his eyes. Not as natural eyes, but his spiritual eyes. That he, he can see that there be more with us than against us. And Lord, today, let us see that although we can only see the pressure around us, that there's a reason and a, a rhyme and a reason to the, the, the things that surround us. Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, first of all, I want you to turn in your Bible, if you will. Uh, we're going to go to the book of James. I want to go straight to a scripture. And um, it's James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And we're going to continue on from where we were last week. And we're going to look at a very simple phrase. And it's coming from uh, verse 12. Verse 12. Now, one of the things that we have encouraged our church to do is to study Matthew 5. It is the most incredible passage that allows you to understand what Jesus wants from you. Many times we'd study the Bible, but we don't really know what Jesus wants. We, we try to live a good life without a pattern. 
And there is one time in the scripture where Jesus sat down and he broke down what he expects for us to have the attitude of, the belief system of, and that's coming from Matthew 5. And I want every one of you, if you don't do anything else in your life, but you study and you memorize and you put that thing inside of you and that you make it so that the Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. It is the difference between Christianity and a living way of life by understanding the will of the Father. And when you can put that into practice, the power of God goes into activation. It was the divining point in my life that changed me from just reading the Bible, just reading and going back home and reading and going back home and reading and going back home and asking the question that many of us have asked, God, where are you? Has anybody ever done that before? You, 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 you go to church and you say, I'm faithful at this and I'm faithful at that. But then when it comes down to the nit gritty you're like God where are you God I can't see you that's why it says blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are the meek in spirit for they shall inherit the earth there are things you get when you understand what his will is now when you get that understanding there is there is power for you but there's a truth that we must all understand. If we were to read verse 12, it starts the same way. Can we all read it together? Let's go. Blessed. Go back over again. Go back over. Let's see. I want to say it till we see it. Hello, somebody. I want to say it till we see it. Look what it says. Blessed is the man or woman. If there's a woman next to you, point at her. He's talking about you too. He's talking about you too. He's talking about you. Blessed is the man, woman, man, woman, woman, man, that, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's, that's written wrong. It goes through temptation. No, stop talking over my microphone. No. This says, blessed is the woman, the man, who goes through temptation. No, man, y'all reading the wrong Bible. It's the Steve Yates verse. It's got to be. See, it's right on the screen. Forget the word endure. It means, it, 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 it's got to mean go through, simply. Go through, endure the temptation. Blessed is the man. Listen, let me tell you something. It is not enough to just go through trouble. Hello, somebody. You've got to endure when you go through. I don't need a broke down car when I'm trying to get home. Hello, somebody. I need a car that'll make it back to my drop. God is looking for people that don't break down on the road of life, but people who say, I'll get you where you want me to go, God. I'll do what you ask me to do. I won't quit. I won't give up. I won't let my engine fail. I won't run out of gas. I'm going to endure. To Come on, somebody. Tell a shake your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Listen, if you don't get this, you will think, well, all I got to do is let the hurricane come and just blow in the wind, just blow in the wind. And I see a lot of Christians today just blowing in the wind, just whoosh, whoosh, in the wind. And God said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Open your mouth and command the wind to stop. Hello, somebody. Why are you... Blessed is the man or the woman who endureth. What does it take for you to make it through? When was the last time you were tried? <laughs> By whom were you last tried? Come on, somebody. That you, you, you knew, when was that last time you knew you couldn't give up? 
You had to keep moving, had to keep going. You, you wanted to give up with all your heart, but you had to keep moving. How many used to run track back in the day? How many, how many used to run track? Raise your hand. Nice and high so everybody can see. Amen. Nice and high. All track running. I'm going to test you after church. Amen. All right. I used to run track, and they, my, my coach, my, my, my coach uh, uh, put me, I used to run what they call a 220, which was half a lap around the track, right? Oh, man, I was bad. I was baddest in the city, baby. Don't, 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 don't try me because I'm good at this, right? So I, he, he always put in the 220, whoo, I'm going, I'm thinking I'm like the flat, doo, I'm the bionic man, doo, 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 doo. Some of y'all don't even know what that is, okay. And, and I'd always win. He, and then one, 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 one Saturday he came and said, Steve, I need you to run the 440. Now if anybody knows, that's twice the distance of a 220. Like, pfft, man, I'm fast as 220 out here, baby. I'll burn them all out. No problem, coach. You got it, baby. And some of us in this room, when it's time to be tested, we lift our hand. God, pff, I'll be there for you. You ain't got to worry about this guy here. You ain't got to worry about me. You can try me. How many know God will test you when you ain't looking for it? Some of you, he would test with money. Some of you, he'd test with patience. Some of you, he would test with patience. Some of you, he would test with patience. Some of Some of you here will test with your anger. You snap like you, you, you snap like a pair of fingers. You got to stop doing that. And, and so God will test you, and you're thinking, man, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. This ain't nothing. I'm a 220 man. And when that thing went on, pow, you know where Steve was. Ahead of the pack. <laughs> I have my own theme music. Dun, 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 dun. You can tell I was in the 80s. And I'm running, and I'm seeing that pack so far behind me. I'm like, man, I got this thing. <laughs> I got this thing. And I'm like, whoo, this is too easy. The coach should have been thinking. He shouldn't have put me here. This is an easy trophy right here. And then I got about, you know, a quarter to the way through. And like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I got this. I got this. And, and, and then all of a sudden, my legs stopped. I, stopped. I couldn't feel my legs no more. I'm like, wait a minute now. Wait, wait. I'm supposed to have legs. What's that? They're moving. I don't, oh, the sound went out. There's no more noise. I don't hear any noise anymore. I just hear wind. I'm like, oh my God, my body has given out. And I start looking, and then all of a sudden, all these people just, <laughs> and then I'm running. I'm going, oh no, no, no. I, 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 I'm used to being first. And I'm like, where are they getting that power from? Where are they getting that speed from? Man, man oh, I'm moving in slow motion. I can't feel nothing. Am I alive? Am I alive? But <laughs> one thing I didn't understand, they were trained to endure the distance. I wasn't ready. I thought I was ready. But Steve Yates wasn't ready. And sometimes when we try to think we're ready, we will fake it in front of people. You claim to be a Christian, but the moment you go through something, you start to breathe heavy. Oh, 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 oh God. Woo! You got me there, God. I thought I had this one. And then somebody walked by. Oh, I got this. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hyperventilating I remember running and I'm thinking oh there they are there's the finish line and I, at least I had in me don't quit and I gotta say this to some of y'all I know you are out of breath I know you weren't ready for this race I know some of y'all were about to if you didn't have to take it you wouldn't take it but because the coach put you in the game, come on somebody, your heavenly coach 
says, get on the field. Now he knew you were a 220 woman and a 220 man. And he knew you thought you could make it. But sometimes God's got to try your heart with something harder. So your heart pumps a little bit stronger. Your legs work a little bit harder. And you can't keep going at the pace you're going because your potential is too much for you to stay at a 220. God's bringing you to a 440 lap. Because at the end of the game, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Hello, somebody. My coach was building me to run a marathon, not just a sprint and then fail. And only thing I had in me was don't quit. But sometimes when we don't understand that it doesn't matter what people think about us, we try to fake it. And I remember coming around after that third dude passed me by. I got mad. I started pulling on everything. How am I supposed to look? How can I fake this like I'm doing this on purpose? And I remembered the Olympics. How every time they pass that finish line, they're always like that. Ah. Crossing that finish line. So I'm about 50 feet from the finish line. And I leaned in. Ha! <sighs> How many know what almost ha what, what happened to Mr. Yates? Uh, I leaned in like ha! <sighs> like I'm doing this on purpose, faking it, trying to make it. The devil is a liar. You can't make it by faking. No, you got to come to the real God and say, God, with listen, in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. You put me in the race. You got to give me the endurance to fit. Come on, somebody. You got to say to God, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to run this race until I finish it. I'm not just coming to church to play the game. No, that was the that was the hundred yard dash. No, I got the two twenty in my lane. I, I, I already did that. But when I went for that four forty, I went ah. All of a sudden, I realized, wait, wait, wait. There's too much weight in my head. There's, my head is my head is. This is what babies do. This is my. I, I'm falling, and I went flat down on my face. I never knew what gravel tastes like. It's a little salty. And when I got up, I was so ashamed because I just knew I won that race. And all I saw was feet jumping over me like I was a hurdle. <laughs> and I was so close. But how many know when you fall, you got to get up again? Come on now. Don't quit if you fall. You scraped your knee, and I know you shame. Look at your neighbor and say, I know you shame. No, look him in the eye. Just say, I know you shame, but get on up. Because God's trying to chisel something out of your life. He's trying to build something into you. God knew you were going to stumble and fall. God also knew that he was going to pick you up again and tell you to keep on running. I got up and I ran like a crazy man over to the end and I got through sideways and I'm like, uh, uh, and all, all, around the back, all around me, people pat me on the back. Man, I'm so proud of you. You made it. I'm like, quit touching me. Quit touching me. But what did it do? It broke my pride. Come on, somebody. Even in my stumbling, it created something good in me. It caused me to be more humble. It's quit looking like I got everything under control. And I want you to see what James said. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. In other words, the thing that draws our pride out and you're able to hold on and not go for it. The devil dingles a, 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 a fish before you and you don't go after to bite it because you say, no, that ain't mine. Okay, I want you to look at your name and say, don't give up what God gave you for something you think 
is better. Years ago, I had a dream. And in the dream, I'll never forget, I walked to this pond, and it was a beautiful pond. I mean, one of those ones where you usually see the green grass on the other side and a nice little unicorn running across, you know. <laughs> and it was a beautiful blue pond, and you could see clearly down to the bottom. And I appeared in the vision with a, a fishing pole. And I remember going to the edge, and I saw this gorgeous, it, the best way I can describe it is a rainbow-colored fish. It's about this big, and it was just enough for me to eat. It was perfect for me. It was the, I mean, it was, when I looked at it, I said, oh, that's mine. That fish is uh, beautiful. And I threw in my net, my, my fish, fishing hook, and I nailed it, and I'm starting to pull it in, and I look over, and I see this long black fish, about four times its size. And I'm going, ooh. And I'm looking at my little fish. And I'm looking at that big old black fish. Looked at my nice, beautiful fish. I said, I bet you I can catch that thing with my fish. And I threw my fish back in the water. And that black fish came along. Ha! Got that thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, snap. My string went, and it swam away with what I thought was perfect for me. What's the lesson in that? When I woke up, God said, don't give up what I give you because you think something's better. <laughs> Some of y'all need to hear that one. Some of y'all see the big old black fish, think bigger is better. Bigger ain't better, baby. You better find out if it's for you. If it ain't for you, you better let that thing go. Hello, somebody. I'm telling you, if it ain't for you, it will fool you and snatch what you got all the way away, and you will walk away from that beautiful pond with tears in your eyes and nothing on your hook. Hello, somebody. Blessed is the man that endureth. In other words, you have to go through. If you are a Christian, you will go through. Somebody going to try you. They may have tried you before you came to church. Don't look at them. Someone's going to try you when you leave church. Some may try you when you're asleep. Y'all think I'm playing. You go to sleep, you start having them kind of dreams. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The ones about the hot dogs and swimming and, and, and having a great summer fun. And Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you don't know how to resist even in your sleep. But King David said, thou hast tested me in my sleep and I have prevailed. It's because in his life, he learned to say no. So in his sleep life, he can still say no. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is, watch this, when he is, let's move on. When he is, can we move, thank you. Tried. Anybody tried? Everybody, anybody in here been tried before? You ever actually said the words, you tried me? <laughs> Parents, you ever, you ever thought that when your kid says something crazy? Oh, you tried me. Yes, you, you tried. <laughs> Blessed is a man that endure temptation for when he is, not maybe, when he is. You may be tried by the person next to you. To keep you holy. You're supposed to stay holy. If you ain't married, th th then wait for marriage. Hello, somebody. It, it, it may be drugs. You don't need to be around people that are selling drugs because it's just going to tempt you. you need, you're getting tried. That's your endurance. Do what, is, is what you have in you stronger than what is on the outside of you? You get tried so, that, so something may happen. What is it? So that when you are tried, he shall receive the crown of after life. <laughs> when I ran a race, they didn't give me the crown of, of, of Michigan when I was running in Florida. 
They didn't give me the award of South Dakota when I was running in Michigan. They gave me the crown of where I ran the race. And he says, and when you endure and you are tried, then you shall receive the crown of life, not afterlife. And you ain't going to get tried in heaven. You're going to get tried in the race you're running. And when you win that race, the, the crown you get is for that race. You will get the crown of life. In other words, you've got to understand it is a race that you are running. And it's called the race of life. We fight in a race of life for a reason. I, I want to show you a passage. I want you to understand why you get tried. And hopefully this will bring some insight to some of you before we close. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 through 15. We are excited. I want to give a, a great shout out to the guys who... Uh, spent the weekend putting together our kiosk in the lobby. Uh, let's give them a hand. Doesn't that look awesome? We're going to be putting coffee and cider and, and little snacks for you before service begins so you don't have to go over to the other side. It's going to be amazing. Uh, but they, they sat here this weekend, and uh, I'm just very proud of them uh, for the work they did. Now, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, and I want us to... To, to read this, and, 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 and let, let's, let's read it together. For we are both, uh-huh. Now let me stop right here. Remember last week when we talked about the workers in the field? We talked about the four types of people, and we read about where he sold in four types of fields. The first field was among um, um, thorn, uh, 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 stony ground, and then he, he did one among thorns, and then he did one among, what was the other one? Yeah, yeah among, among the shallow, and then he did one sold among the fertile ground, 30, 60, 100 fold. He says the worker was the one who sows the seed, okay? Paul is speaking from that context, and he's saying this. Paul said these words, for we are God's fellow workers. He's talking about Paul and Apollos and Peter and James and all the apostles. And he says, but guess what? You are God's field. Every seed we speak is for you to grow in your field. Do you understand what that means? Everything that you see this is why we talk about giving so that we have a place. Listen, giving isn't to make somebody rich. Giving is so that you can come in here and not be hot. Oh, y'all missed that one. I'm gonna, watch this. One Sunday, I'm going to come in and turn the AC off. And he'll be like, what's wrong with this church? People like, fall asleep. Listen, we do it so that you have a comfortable place to worship and hear the Lord. Come on, somebody. We do it so we can open up a foyer that you'll see has showers in there so we can invite some of the families that are homeless in their cars during the week to take a shower for them and their children. That's why we struggled for this. That's why we fought for this, because it's the right thing to do. We wouldn't stop while a builder tried to run us over. We stood our ground and we said, you will do it right or not at all. Because, listen, they can have showers for dogs at dog parks, but we can't have a shower for a person living in a... I'm going to endure my race. I will take the punch on the face for that family. That's who we are at Frontier. We're on the outer edge, baby. We do things nobody will do. That's who we are. We're bold. We, 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 we're not afraid of the temptation. We're not afraid to endure. Now look at this. Paul says this. Every seed we preach is so that you get out of here and you put it to work. Every one of you. Not to sit in church, but that you take what I just said and you use it. Now watch this. It says this. For we are the fellow workers and you are God's field. You. Everyone point at yourself. You are God's building. 
wait a minute now. You're God's building? This ain't it? This isn't God's building? That's why when you look at another person, all this foolishness about racism and bigotry and politics that is going on right now is foolishness. I don't care what side you're on. It's foolishness. Because what's going to happen in six years? You're going to turn around and look at people in the same eyes, but a different person to be in charge. What you going to say after all that foolishness you did? How are you going to live then when you know how you behave back then? you got to live for eternity. You can't get caught up in the right now. You run in a race called life. It ain't every four years. It's your life. So govern how you treat each other. Love one another as God has loved you. Don't get in your personal circles and gossip about people. Don't get in your personal circles and talk about black people. Talk about white people. Talk about Mexicans. Talk about El Salvadorians. Talk about blah, blah, blah. Talk about blah, blah, blah. You all were made from one blood. The blood of Adam. Get with it. Adam, there ain't no other kind, baby. You didn't come from a monkey. Oh, well, Pastor Steve, I believe in evolution. I just think that we can, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> I think we come from monkeys a little bit, you know. <laughs> we monkey around a little bit. <laughs> Hush your mouth. When he made the animals, he made them one, male, and then he made another one, female. He didn't do that with humanity. He took Adam, he put him to sleep, and then he pulled out of Adam, the woman. There is a genetic loop because there, he didn't make two of them. He made one of them and pulled one out of the other. Not so with animals. Not so. You didn't come from animals. So don't treat each other like we're animals. You don't put animals in cages. You don't put animals in feeders. You take care of your brother and your sister. You stand for what's right. Uh, some of y'all getting tried right now. But see me in three years when all the fuss is over. And see if you ain't shamed. Thinking your thought was right then. There is a way that seemeth right to man. But the ends thereof are the ways of death. You kill your walk with God. You kill your walk with your brother. How can you hate your brother who you can see. And then say you love God who you cannot. <laughs> Foolishness. You're going to get tried. Look at your name and say, you're going to get tried. Are you going to make it or not? Are you in it for the long haul or the short run? Come on, somebody. You running a 220 or you running a marathon? Which is it? Tell your neighbor, I'm running a marathon, baby. I, <laughs> I'm looking for the crown. I'm, I got to get me a crown out of this one. Ooh. Is this, is, is, uh, am I telling you the truth? Please. You are God's building. And Paul says, according to the grace which was given me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation. In other words, my role is to lay the foundation on who Jesus Christ is, to present him to you and lay that foundation. There is no other foundation laid but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, he goes on to say, and another builds on it. You can come in on a Sunday morning and get saved. I've laid the foundation. But be careful who you let build on your property. Be careful who you let build on your property. 
Some of you will get on television and believe everything they told you. You'll take your money for a $1,000 prophetic word. Or you got a family in your own neighborhood with their lights out. And they don't even give you a word. You just go around looking for it. You could have done that without giving the money. God speaks to all of us. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. Jesus said the poor will be with us always. So the idea of prosperity gospel is foolishness. Did you hear what I just said? The poor will be with us always. So how can there be a prosperity gospel? No, there are people that care about the homeless and the, those who are downtrodden. It is, they're called good Samaritans. We have to treat each other like they're living people. Look what it says. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one, I just said it, take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to close with this, and we'll pick up next week. And this is so, you got to be here for next week. Invite a person, because I'm going to teach you something that's going to be life-changing here. And I'll stop here. But, but it says, for no other foundation can lay which that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, watch this. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear. Do you notice anything about that list? Look at it. Do you notice anything about that list that he enumerates? He said, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, straw. What do you notice about the list? Go ahead and shout it out. It's okay, but the ushers won't lead you out. Huh? I can't, I can't shout it out. I can't hear you. Blah, 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 blah. blah. I heard that. What now? They're one, three or more sturdier. Do, uh, you, the, the value? Okay. Do you notice the strength of them diminish? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood. Hey, hold on now. Are you kidding me? Straw? Who? What is it, the three little pigs? <laughs> We've been doing a lot of hot air today, haven't we? <laughs> Which one of y'all living in a three little pigs house? Raise your hand, please. Because guess who's coming? The big bad wolf. And when the big bad wolf comes, he's going to huff and he's going to puff and he's going to. <laughs> How'd y'all know I was going to weave that one in there, right? Some of y'all, your Christianity is as weak as hay. And when the enemy comes, all he goes is. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all do that with me? <laughs> Some of y'all are like so proud. No, I'm a man. You don't want to get in caught with your Christianity knowledge and foundation that's been laid, which is Jesus Christ, him crucified. That's not going to change. Once say, when God saves you, he did his job. But what you build on it determines how much how, and how hungry you are. You got to decide what you're going to build your house out of. How many of you will go out of here today and, and get a house loan and go to the hay yard? Y'all glue me some hay together? Who would do that? But, but think about it. What if you had a golden house? 
The heat temperature, I'll get into this next week. But I need you to understand as we close today. Some of you today need to recognize what kind of house you have. And say, Lord, I got to make it. And I can't make this race with what I got. This is what we've done as a church. Every Wednesday night, we have classes. One we're doing right now called Experiencing God for those who want to experience God. Every Wednesday night. For those who are in marital issues, having marital struggles, or just want to learn how to be better at what you do, we have a, a ministry called Two to Win, and we're taking a class called to re-engage. You're looking to get married or you're married, that's the class you need to be in. If you're struggling with something that you just can't let go of and you know you want to and you feel like you can't get really plugged in with everybody else because you feel like you you got to get rid of this problem, we've got a, 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 a class every Friday night, 7 o'clock, called, what's it called? That's Frontier. Beyond Limits. And then, if you want to find out who you are, what you're made of, your design, your, 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 the way you're, you, were, you were made from the birth, we have class called Discovery, unlike anything ever done in a church before. You need to be a part of that. And outside of that, come to church. There's something for everybody so that you can build upon your foundation something other than hey take advantage of your church everyone say my church this is what we provide so that you could grow and get the crown do you hear me get the crown of life would you stand to your feet I am more than honored that you came today. And I would encourage you that if you have friends, family, invite them out to Frontier Church. Let them see who you follow. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And I need to say to some of you who are struggling, have hope. Hold on. Your help is coming. Believe me, your help is coming. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't look around at the world and say, well, here's how it's falling apart. Th that ain't the same. That The rules don't apply in here. We have a God that we serve that keeps us together. Come on, somebody. He keeps our minds together. He'll keep us in perfect peace. Our minds as they're stayed on him. But there are some of you today that may not have accepted the Lord Jesus in your heart today. I want to put a call. Everyone close your eyes and bow your heads if you would. If you have not let Jesus Christ into your life and he's not the Lord of your life and you don't even have that foundation, I want to give it to you so that you don't have to struggle with the enemy keep tearing down everything you build up. I'm going to count to three, and you know who you are. G let Jesus in. He'll take care of the wolves in your life. I'm going to count to three, and if you have not received Jesus, I'm going to want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Lift your hands if you haven't received Jesus and you want to right now. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Good. Put your hands down, please. I want to say this to those who are in the room. If you were honest with yourself, this is for everyone. Could you really say your house being built right now based on what you build it with? Because as master builders, we lay a perfect foundation. Our foundation is built on Jesus Christ. It's perfect. But as everyone builds on their own foundation, it's based on your decision on what you put on your foundation. Whether you're going to let yourself be taught 
or you're going to be unteachable. And if you would be honest with yourself today, how many honestly can raise a hand and say, my house ain't gold right now? Would you just lift your hands and say that with me? That you hadn't built on your house gold yet, and you need it. I want to pray a prayer for those who want a better house, a better building. Let me pray for you. Everyone's hand lifted high before the Lord God Almighty. Father, we pray right now for everyone in this house that they get the gist, they understand that they are your house. And how their house looks is based on what they build it with. Hay, wood, precious stones, silver, or gold. Every man has a right to build what their house of God looks like. And for those in this room who want a golden house to give you the glory, I ask that you set them on the path, put the passion in them to build upon their foundation of Jesus Christ a house that a wolf can't come by and blow down. And for those who looked at other stuff and stopped building on their house, Lord, forgive them and let them get the energy and the passion back to start building again and endure the temptation so they can get their crown of life. I bless them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.